Welcome back to Yoga Express, the mobile stretch clinic that takes yoga to the people. I have with us another beautiful guest who hasn't been with us in a very long while. Paula Gloria is a producer here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Thank you for joining us today, Paula. It's always nice to be with you. It's lovely. I'm so happy you're back. I remember you were here with us in episode number 24. That was, oh, this is, we are now in 83, so that's about 60, almost 60 episodes back. But it's really wonderful to have you back, Paula. Where have you been all this while? I've been up in Woodstock following the Joe Barton J. Deberman trial in Kingston, and it's going very favorably for inalienable constitutional rights. Paula has a wonderful program called Father Down the Rabbit Hole here at MNN. And she keeps running to Woodstock to do all her research, but she comes back with these wonderful, wonderful, re wonderfully researched projects, and she airs them here. Paula, what channels? Channel 34 on the Community Affairs channel, and uh, it's at 12 noon, and often when I'm not in Woodstock, we go, we go live. There you go. And I want you as a guest, too. <laughs> I'm nowhere <laughs> close to the interesting stuff you'll get at Woodstock, but yes, I'd love to do that sometime. Oh, yeah. Welcome back, Paula. It's really great to have you. We're going to have Josiane tell us a little bit. Josiane Hurd, to my right. Not only did she practice belly dancing, Josiane also used to do martial arts, Aikido, Taekwondo, whatever those you have. Those energy, right? Is that correct? Kendo, karate, and sailing. And sailing. Josiane, tell us a little bit. I've never really had a chance to ask you much about your sailing, so or any of the other sports yeah. that you take. I was part always in. including yeah. yoga in everything I did. Never mind what. It could have been boxing or Taekwondo or Aikido. I was always a session of yoga in between. Right. Because it's good for the relaxation, the stretch, and the, the all well-being all together uh, before I was doing anything. And it really helped me a lot. Yoga has yeah. helped oh, you yes, a lot. for everything. Have you ever tried all the balance postures on a boat? Was that uh, when the boat was moored? Only at mooring or the docking and things like that. Uh, but usually, you know, the, the meditation and the right. quiet posturing was very uh, relieving. I think it must be wonderful to meditate on the waters, right? Oh yes, it's just it, it, watching it's a nice combination. Water. It's so yeah. peaceful. It's so wonderful. Well, it's really good. I'm so glad you're back with us, Josiane. Josiane has a bit of a tender knee, and she's okay with me sharing that information. I want viewers out there to understand that if you have either hurt yourself, and fortunately you did not hurt yourself during our session, so I'm happy to hear <laughs> that. Josiane got a little ambitious. Tell us, tell our viewers, so they don't get worried that our program might hurt them, but you did get in, try to get you into yoga You can do posture. any kind of movement, as long as you know your, your possibility, your, you know, don't go too far. If it hurts, you stop. You were actually trying to sit in cross-legged position in front of the computer, and was it because there wasn't enough space? Yes, I, the, the room was cold, and I was going like this, bring my ah. leg up. And, oh. Oh. Bring a little more, more, little more, little more. So you hadn't warmed I'm, I'm up. I'm using it all the time. I do that for years I've been doing it. Right. Suddenly I went too far. It's a question of retraining neglected muscles. And I think... Um, and especially when it's cold. Especially when it's cold. We really need to thaw our muscles. We need to unwind. We need to do anything that helps us just release any tension or any cold feelings in our knees, in our back. The rest of our body, in fact, I think we need to have a whole episode on warm-ups, and we will one of these days. Right now, we are going, taking it very easy. We're going very gently into all these stretches. So for folks at home who have just maybe just sat in a very cold room, in an air-conditioned room, you want to make sure you don't go directly. Oh, you've just woken up in the morning. You want to make sure you don't start stretching right away. Just do very gentle stretches. Uh, in fact, those stretches should be so gentle, they're almost like a warm-up. So we're going to focus today on hamstring stretches. So there'll be a lot of forward folds, a lot of seated forward folds, standing forward folds, and a lot of inversions. 
So they won't be total inversion, so we won't be doing headstand, we're not even doing shoulder stand. We want inversions where your feet are on the ground so you can feel that beautiful, beautiful hamstring stretch. So let's start with some of the standing stretches. Posture number two, before our feet freeze, Okay, heels are together, toes are slightly apart. I'm gonna stagger myself back just a little bit. I don't wanna hit this poster, but is it too close? Oh, well. <laughs> uh, Josiane and uh, Paula, would you mind coming forward just a little bit? Okay, this way we won't hit each other. Heels together, toes slightly apart, palms by your side. Chest is out. Tighten your pelvic sphincters, bring your hips forward. Bring your pelvis forward just a little bit. So you wanna make sure your knees are as close together as possible. Make sure you keep a nice, tight lower abdomen. Palms are by your side. Inhale, take your arms up to shoulder height. Palms facing down. Keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead. Palms facing in. Clasp your palms together. And what we're gonna do, hold it. Look up at your palms. We're gonna fold forward from the hip, keeping a nice straight back and exhaling at the same time. Exhale and fold. This posture is called Pada Hasta. As you can see, Pada Hasta means Pada is foot, Hasta is hand. It literally translates as hands to feet. As you can see, your hands are going down towards your feet. As we are in this position, I want all of you at home to be aware that it's not very important to touch your toes. As long as you are as far down as you possibly can, make sure that you make the connection place your hands either at your toes if you can reach them place them at the ankles or on your shins or even the back of the calves you just want to make sure you feel a wonderful wonderful stretch in the back of your legs it's a beautiful stretch for your hamstrings and that's what this episode is all about and let's hold that for a few more seconds keep exhaling the more you exhale the more air you get out of your body the deeper you get into a posture. Feel a wonderful compression of your lower abdomen on your upper thigh. Now bring your palms together again. Let's inhale and come up. Keep your back nice and straight. Keep inhaling. Exhale and release the arms. How does that feel? Wonderful. Wonderful. Feels good? Doesn't it feel great? It's so relaxing. We're going in an inversion, so the blood is rushing to the brain, refreshes the brain. Feel a beautiful sciatic stretch. And Paula is all set. She's revved up for the next one already now. <laughs> okay, let's try posture number eight. Posture number eight is called Ugrasan. Ugra is also known as Prasarita Padottanasan. Prasarita is when you have your legs out outstretch but ugra, uh, ugra literally translates as fierce i have no idea why this posture looks fierce what we're going to do is maybe let's all turn to the right bring your legs apart about three to four feet wide put your brakes on so make sure your feet your toes are turned in you don't want to slip you want to be very safe now if you're not very tall and if you're just about my height let's say you're my height you want to keep your feet a little closer, but also remember that if you keep your feet closer, it's going to be that much harder to come down to the floor, to bring your head to the floor. <laughs> so I'm going, to, I'm going to take a chance and bring my legs apart a little more, but I'm going to put my brakes on so I have a nice grip on the mat. Palms up by your side. We're going to inhale, bring our arms. Let me stagger this way. Bring your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. And what we're going to do this time, clasp your palms together. We're going to exhale, fold from the hip, just like we did in the previous posture, hasta, pada hasta. Keep your back nice and straight. The only difference in this posture, you have your legs outstretched. So we're going to exhale and fold forward. Bring your palms on the floor or on the mat between your legs and I'm going to now, once you've got a nice grip on the floor, you can start staggering your feet a little more to come down even deeper. Keep exhaling. What does that mean, stagger? Stagger, bring your feet out a little more. That's it, keep going, yeah, that's it. <laughs> you have to remember, Paula, I come from a non-native English speaking background. <laughs> 
keep exhaling. The more you exhale, the deeper you come into this posture. Now, if your head is not going, if the crown of your head is not going to touch the floor today, that's fine. You can use a brick, use a block, and it doesn't, you don't have to touch the floor. You just want to feel a beautiful, beautiful hamstring stretch. Press with your palms, wiggle your feet a little closer if you need to. I know I do. And then when you're comfortable and you feel safe, bring your palms together, bring them out in front of you, inhale, and let's come up. Sorry, Josian. Keep inhaling. Exhale and release the arms. Now I'm going to wiggle. We're going to wiggle our legs, wiggle our feet together, bring them closer. Let's see if the next one... <laughs> Paula is in that position because she... Thing, she feels that maybe the next one is going to have, we're going to keep our legs outstretched. You're probably right, Paula. Let's see. Jumping no. Num <laughs> it's number Cheating. 13. <laughs> it's actually number 13. Che your teacher's looking at a cheat sheet. <laughs> uh, number 13 is Uttita Pada. Uttita means raised and Pada is foot. So it's a raised leg. So it's still a hamstring stretch, but it's one leg at a time. So yes, teachers are allowed to use cheat sheets once in a while. <laughs> Transfer the weight to your left leg. So you want to put all your weight on the left leg. Make sure your hip is nicely balanced over your left leg. So you have basically your left leg comes in the center so you don't fall off. Now raise your right heel and place your left hand on your left hip. So you want to hold your left hip for balance. We're going to move, uh, you're going to bend your right leg at the knee and turn it out to the side just a little bit. Now take, move your left ankle closer to your hand and very gently grab hold of your right ankle, sorry, uh, right leg. Grab hold of your right big toe with your right hand and then inhale and extend your leg out. Now, if you're very comfortable in this position, I'm not too comfortable. I'm still going to try <laughs> and move my leg to the side and try to bring it out. Now, it's not very important to keep your leg very straight. Of course, the straighter you are, the more of a hamstring stretch you will feel, the straighter your leg is. Let me inhale, and I'm going to come to you, Josie. Inhale, bring your leg in, release. Now, Josie, and I, I know no that is the knee left. that you have hurt. So you've hurt yourself. No, it's my foot. I have no balance on my left foot. Right. Jo uh, now, Josie is going to be very careful now. If you have either hurt, your left foot or you have a problem on the left foot, you don't want to put all your weight. What we can do, are you okay to extend this leg when the we go up one. in this posture? The other one. Yeah, the only thing is then you're going to feel an imbalance in your body, so you might want to skip this. Uh, no, it's okay. I you're I okay? Try. All right, give it a try. Let's transfer the weight to our right leg. Now, you're going to raise your left foot at the heel, turn your left knee out just a little bit, and lift your left foot closer to your hand, grab your left big toe with your left hand, Place. make sure you have your right hand on your right hip. Once you feel nice and firm and rock solid, nice and steady, extend your left leg out. Nice, good going Josiane. Paula, good job. Now, Paula and the last posture went out to the side, so I'm going to try and keep up with them. I'm going to try and take my leg to the side. If your leg does not go out all the way to the side, that's perfectly all right. You still should be, you should feel. Inhale, come forward, exhale, and release. You should feel that wonderful, delicious stretch in the back of your thighs, that beautiful hamstring stretch. That is the purpose of this sequence, is hamstring stretches. Okay, so we did do both legs. So what do you want to do? Well, what you want to do is instead of... It's only four toes holding me on the left. So right, right. You want to be careful. Yes, you want to be very careful. If you have any reason, uh, any pain, or any uh, particular reason for which or where you cannot do a particular uh, part of the posture, it's perfectly all right. Just make sure you are aware that there is an imbalance at that point. So you want to be sure if you have not extended your right leg, you might, you might just want to do a very casual stretch. Just be... You know, just come forward a little bit. That's not part of our sequence, but I want to make sure that you feel the stretch mm -hmm. in both mm -hmm. legs. Okay, number eight. Feedback. How did that feel? I noticed you were able to get your leg out to the side. Very nice. 
I thought that's what we're supposed to do. Well, I had traditionally, such confidence in the teacher and the tradition and the well, wisdom and the yes. knowledge and the studying and the commitment. Now, Paula is a true yoga addict today. <laughs> yes, traditionally, yes. You do bring your leg out all the way to the side because we are doing basic stretches. I'm not very sure that I can even demonstrate to everybody that you know, that I'm able to do it. So what I tell people is do the best you can on that particular day. But I noticed that well, you were editing, able to, that I've was seen nice. What the best I could do was, I was wavering, <laughs> but you know. No, but, but in the, the first. Willing. <laughs> the spirit's willing. No, we're all here. We're and all here to help. yoga is bringing the body along with the spirit, right? There you that's go. Right, that's right, <laughs> The yogic breathing, the exhales, everything is giving us a balance and the focus. But you're right. I mean, it's the idea is to just focus inward, to just send our energy in yoga we believe and i'm sure you're aware of this where the mind goes energy flows so we're sending right. our energy to that part of the body that probably needs it most right. so once you start focusing inward that's all it takes to keep your balance and your focus the, the moment we start thinking of other things then of course the mind gets uh, the right. thoughts get interrupted. Yeah. That's when we might right. lose our balance. Like as soon as you compliment me, you'll see the energy <laughs> that I start to waver. Uh-oh. Now I can't compliment Paula anymore. No, but you did a great job. It was very nice to watch. I could see you from the side of my eye. Very nice to see you watch and see you swing your right leg out. I noticed that the other leg, does that go out as much as your right leg? Probably you not because I have severe scoliosis. I had two right. ten vertebrae fused and my spine was curved. So that oh, I okay. favor one side over the other. One over the other. And that happens... Uh, to many of us, in any case, we all have imbalances in the body, which allows one side to be more flexible, one side to be, um, I don't know, more uh, steady. So yeah, whatever your reasons, that you did well on the right side, I could see this side, so your leg was coming nice the and- The left is still needs to be worked on. <laughs> <laughs> number 13, is that what we just did? Yes, we did 13. Okay, let's try number 16. That's another beautiful hamstring stretch. It's just Uttanasana or ragdoll. And 13, Josie, and I think you'll be very comfortable with that. Oh, yes. Heels together, toes slightly apart. You, uh, Josie, and if you want to come forward just a little bit. And we're going to go transition from 13. We'll go directly into number, no, I'm sorry, it's 16. 16 directly into number 17. So we won't come back up. If I talk you into coming back up, stay there. I'll correct myself. <laughs> Heels together, toes slightly apart. Hands by your side, chest is out, pelvis tilted forward just a little bit. Now, if you want to enjoy this experience a little more and you're fine with your balance, you may close your eyes. It's always in posture, in yoga postures, eyes are open when you go up. You may close them when you go down. When you're folding forward, you may close them, provided you don't have a vertigo problem or any balance issues. So, inhale, bring the palms up to shoulder height. Keep inhaling, take the palms all the way overhead, palms turning in. Now this time, we are going to clasp the opposite elbows. We're going to exhale and fold from the hip, keeping our back nice and straight. Folks at home, join us. Exhale and fold. This is one of the few postures where I do not insist that you need to make the connection in that you don't have to place your palms on the floor. You've already made the connection by clasping your opposite elbows. Just let your body go, just relax. Feel that wonderful, delicious stretch in the back of your thighs. Your hamstrings should be nice and rubbery, nice and stretched. Keep exhaling. If the stretch gets a bit intense, bend your knees just a little bit, but you should still feel the stretch. Now, instead of coming back up, we're going to transition into the next posture. Place your palms on the floor about two feet away from your legs. Very gently take your right foot back. Gracefully take the left foot back. Make sure, if you can, make sure you, can, uh, you bring your heels down to the ground. This is... Parvat Asan. It's also called downward dog. I have no reason. Um, I have. I, I I have no idea why. I guess when you see dogs going down <laughs> this posture. Uh, but this is a, a Parvat is mountain. So in some schools, this posture is called Parvat Asan, mountain posture. You should feel a beautiful, beautiful hamstring stretch on the back of your legs. Now, if you do not place your heels on the floor, you might find this stretch a little less intense. So if you want to feel 
Your hamstrings stretch just a little more. Try to very gently bring your heels to the ground. Now, if you don't make the connection today with your heels, that's perfectly all right. Place a brick or a towel or something under your heels. Keep exhaling. Now we're going to come down on our knees. We're going to release. Oh, actually, no. I'm sorry. Did you already come down? No. Let's walk our feet closer to our hands because I think we have another standing one. Walk our feet closer and very gently roll your spine up. Inhale. Come up very gently. Exhale and release. So we did 16 and 17 together. We're most likely going to do 26. We were going to go into a seated. I wasn't sure. I thought we had another standing one. We're going to go into 26 and 27. 26 is Janu Sesha. Let's sit down on the floor. Left leg is extended. Right leg is bent at the knee. So your right heel, your right sole tucks itself into the left inner thigh. So you want to make sure that the heel is nice and close to your groin. Left leg is extended. Talk your body to face the extended leg. So you want to make sure that your left leg and your folded right leg are at an L to each other. So, and your body is facing forward. Now flex your feet. You don't want to make it too, you don't want to be very stiff. You want to just flex it in a very relaxed manner. You don't want to point your toes. You will not feel a hamstring stretch if you point your toes. So keep your feet, uh, keep your extended leg, uh, the foot on the extended leg flexed. So we're gonna talk our body a little bit to the left. Inhale, take your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead. Once your arms are above, you wanna clasp your palms together. You can clasp it in any way that your school teaches you. You can clasp all your fingers in a uh, cross your fingers over the over each other, or you can keep one finger out. So Josian, now notice Josian has all her both her palms flat against each other, and uh, Paula has the index finger and the thumbs pointing upward. I like to call that the lightning conductor. <laughs> <laughs> and she's actually taking the energy from the atmosphere. So I'm going to clasp just to show you the different ways that you can clasp your hands together. I'm going to clasp all my uh, fingers together. So I'm going to hold and we're going to exhale and fold from the hip. Keep your back nice and straight. Exhale. Now if you can get your hands over the left foot, that's great. Get a nice good grip. Make sure that if you don't need to, try not to bend your left leg. Keep it nice and extended. You should feel a beautiful hamstring stretch in your left leg. In the right leg, there's not much of a stretch happening here. Maybe you feel just a little bit, what do you think, Josiane, do you Maybe feel? Maybe prevent me from bending forward. Right, oh, okay, okay. Uh, don't, don't bend forward, but do you feel any kind of a stretch on the outside oh, yes. of your mm -hmm. right yeah. thigh? What about you, Paula? Do you feel any stretch on the right yeah. leg? Oh, yeah, wonderful stretch. Uh, what about this knees. leg, the right side? Oh, no, no, I don't. No, so the right leg is relaxed. We have five minutes more, wonderful. Thank you, Claudia. So gonna keep exhaling. Janu Sesha, Janu is knee and Sesha is head. Janu Sesha is literally head to knee. Those of you who are fortunate enough not to have any obstruction in your midriff as I do, <laughs> keep exhaling and try to bring your forehead to your knee. If you just want to feel, if you just want a sense of how it feels to touch your forehead to your knee, bend your knee just a little bit, but just be aware that your hamstring stretch won't be as intense, but just so you can feel that. Someday I'm going to be able to keep my knee, my leg nice and outstretched and bring my head down. Keep exhaling. Inhale. Bring your arms up. Exhale and release the arms. Now we're going to switch legs. We're going to take the left leg in, tuck the left heel into your, the right side of your groin and then your, the whole of your left sole should be nice and flat against your inner right thigh. I'm going to extend the right leg. Flex your right foot and talk your body to face the extended leg. So you want to make sure that your left knee is down as far, as far down as you can get it. You're okay with this knee, Josiane? Oh, yeah, this one is this no one's problem. okay. <laughs> okay. 
Josiane's doing the sensible thing. She wants to be very careful because she still is hurting from a tender knee. And, but you're okay with this leg. So oh, yes. with the right leg being this extended, you're no okay. Because that's the knee that's giving you yes, a problem someone. today. Okay. We're going to talk our body to face the extended leg. You look very comfortable. I don't even have to ask you, Paula. <laughs> yeah, I'm comfortable. <laughs> I can do more when I'm with you. It's wow. Like saying, it's like saying the doctor, you're not so sick when you see the doctor, the symptoms right. go away. You like people I to share stretch, the... <laughs> I can stretch more, because as you're talking, it's relaxing. And, and it's a good point that you brought up, too. It's not... I think it's also sheer pain, <laughs> literally. Because you know when we go to the gym, you like to see others suffer with you, right? No one wants to go to the gym on their own. Well, that's why they have gyms, right? Where you that's can right. watch everyone sweat, and you suddenly you're working up a sweat. So yeah, come, share, share the pain with us. <laughs> Talk your body a little bit to face the extended leg. Your foot is nice and flexed, not too stiff, not pointed for sure. Just keep it nice and relaxed and flexed. Inhale. Bring your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling. Turn your palms in. Bring your arms all the way overhead. Exhale. Fold from the hip. Keep your back nice and straight. Wrap your hands over the flexed right foot. And keep exhaling, keep going deeper, one millimeter every day. I have a feeling that <laughs> this leg, my forehead might reach this knee a little earlier than the other Me too. knee. You feel that too, right? See, we all have one side that's more flexible, one side that's stronger. That's good to know, we're not alone. <laughs> Inhale, come up. Keep your right leg extended as it is. Exhale, release the arms, and then, no problem. And then extend the left leg. We're gonna go into a posture called Paschimottan Asan. It's a full forward fold. Paschimottan also translates to bird beak. I have no idea why. Again, I guess when we fold over, it looks like the beak of a bird. So we're just gonna visualize that we're all beaks of a bird. <laughs> uh, of different kinds of birds. Wait, what bird has this huge beak? Is it a toucan? Stork. Toucan, yes, Stork? Toucan. Toucan? Yeah, toucan. okay. So what do you want to be? Talk? Uh, no, toucan, toucan, stork? Toucan. toucan, okay. I'll be a stork. <laughs> stork, okay. So that leaves me, I'll be a crow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crows are good. Yeah, okay. So They're keep your smart. feet, legs, say again. They're very smart. Very smart, <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> legs are, both legs are extended. Feet are flexed. You want to flex them not too far back. You want to flex them so you're nice and relaxed. You don't want to point them. You want to feel this beautiful hamstring stretch in the back of your legs. Now, arms by your side. Inhale, bring your arms up to shoulder height. Palms facing down. Keep inhaling. Take your arms all the way overhead. Palms facing in. Once you've clasped your palms together, exhale and fold from the hip. Keep your back nice and straight. Now place your palms over the soles of your feet. If your palms are not quite there today, that's perfectly okay. Place your palms at your ankles, your calf, your knees, wherever you can get down to. So I'm gonna try and hold on to the soles of my feet and I will exhale. We're all gonna exhale little sips of air and try to get down a little deeper every time. In this posture, we're not all very fortunate to get our heads to the knee, but we're gonna try. We're gonna keep trying every day. Keep exhaling. Inhale. It's a wrap, kids, wrap. Come up. Wrappy, wrappy, wrappy. Exhale and release. Thank you, Danny. I didn't do my, did we do the commercial? Time Warner 57, RCN 84, Fios 35. I think we skipped that. We skipped that this time. That's all right. That was great. Thank that you. That feels good, doesn't thank it? You. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. It makes it look more balanced and yeah. juicy. Oh, and yes. Thank you. You were wonderful. Anytime. Just thank keeping you. up even with your knees. Thanks so much. And I had fun Please. doing two cameras. Oh, thank you, Shanti. I, was I can definitely what this do was more when I'm with you. I think it just, it is a question she's of group very, energy. She's, she's very, energy, uh, right? encouraging. She's huh? very, she's very encouraging. Yeah. Also, also when yeah, we practice together. Yeah. Right when we practice together.
Welcome to Yoga Express, the mobile stretch clinic that takes yoga to the people. Before I go and introduce a really, truly wonderful, wonderful guest today, Amy Harlett, I have a lot to say about her. So I'm going to give a few pointers of where you can watch Amy on our show. Yoga Express airs Monday through Friday at 1.30 p.m., that's 1.30 in the afternoon, on Time Warner 57, RCN 84, and Files 35. Now, we do have a program that airs every day. Today is just one of those very special days where we will not necessarily be doing the basic stretches that we usually do. Typically, what we do is pick some of these basic stretches from a sequence called 48 plus they are 48 simple ailment specific stretches and we put them into little categories twists forward folds bends we help you speak to your body every day for about half an hour so stay with us we will send you a free postcard to help you we have a lot of support for you we'll also send you a fridge magnet with the sequence and a business card with the sequence on the back one way or another, you're assured of having a lot of support from us, so no excuses not to stretch. Stretch with us. Just a little word of warning though, what Amy is going to do today is not what you would want to do on a typical day as part of your daily yoga stretches. Amy is a yoga contortionist and a dancer, and she has choreographed wonderful theme-based dances using yoga postures. Amy has a lot, a lot of yoga stretching experience. I do not, and I cannot stress this enough, I do not want any of you out there to try what Amy is trying unless you have as much experience as she does. Having said that, just a little bit of a commercial. This is a book called Yoga Secrets. It's one of my latest books. Well, as late as 2008, it has eight ailment specific cards inside, eight ailment specific sequences, which you can practice on a daily basis. None of them come close to what Amy can do. I'm gonna give Amy the cue to get started in another minute or so, but before I do that, I would like to introduce the amazing Amy Harlan. Amy is 55 and she has spent most of her life studying various forms of movement and physical theater. She became attracted to Chinese martial arts, acrobatics, and yoga in the early 1980s. She parlayed that into a solo performance career that took her to Taiwan and back to her native New York City environs to perform in a wide variety of venues. I'm gonna clear the stage because Amy is gonna to perform to some nice soft music. She's gonna perform a beautiful dance called the Yoga Odyssey and very carefully, right on camera, I'm going to remove the two yoga mats so we can clear the space for Amy. And Jabari, if you don't mind, would you change the music? The music that inspires Amy a lot more when she performs. And we also have a wonderful audience here. Amy's used to performing in front of a huge crowd. Now, hopefully, she will get a lot of viewers on our show. So she's going to perform on camera, and we also have a very supportive audience right here, so I'm very delighted. Amy, take the floor. As Amy performs, I'm going to tell you a little more about her. So Amy, it's all yours. Go ahead. In 1994, injuries forced Amy to retire with a distinct disintegrated disc in her spine, torn rotator cuffs in both shoulders, and arthritis that necessitated a total left hip replacement in 1998. All that time, Amy never stopped her yoga. I find that so inspiring. She so hated not performing that she used her extreme flexibility and zany imagination, zany is right for you, Amy, to relaunch her career in March 2009. Already, the amazing Amy has appeared at the downtown Review, the Bindlestiff Family Circus Open Variety Show at the Galapagos Arts Space, the Lava Dance Company, Night of Renegades Variety Show, the High Christina Art Space, the Ruby Streak Trophy Studios Velveteen Rainbow Showcase, Cirque Off at Triskelion Art Space, the House of Yes. Williamsburg, Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, and the Gong Show Live at Phoebe King's New York City. Amy, just for your information, 
Foundation is the only contortionist in the world who has created theme-based yoga dance apps. I can totally believe it just watching her from here. I feel very privileged to have you on our show, Amy. Each of her dances, each of her acts, are about six to seven minutes long, including Yoga Odyssey, which is what Amy is performing today. It's a pure movement that celebrates the beauty of flowing flexibility. As you can see in her demo right here, Yoga Trek is another one. She stretches boldly where few folks have ever ventured before. Yoga Yenta, performed to live klezmer music and sprinkled with verbal Yiddishisms. Jedi Yoga, a Star Wars themed yoga act. Yoga Tango, tribal yoga, contortion and belly dance combined. Wow, I can just imagine how that's gonna be, Amy. We will have you back on our show. Some of her other efforts, other themes are spooky yoga for Halloween on Fri or Friday the 13th, Yuletide yoga, Christmas time yoga, yoga anime, contortion to music from Japanese anime features, techno trance, yoga dance, that name says it all, Yoga Cougar, where she flirts outrageously with the audience to Pink Panther theme music, hot pink feather boa included. Yoga Blues, Jazzy Yoga, and much, much more. Amy is an avid reader of science fiction and fantasy literature, art and graphic novels. And she loves to indulge in her passion for reading and cinema, especially the silent clowns. Other interests include cats, Star Trek and Star Wars, archaeology, anthropology, paleontology, folklore and mythology, genre films, science for intelligent laypersons, memoirs and narratives as literature. When it comes to yoga, she is flexible in every sense of the word and quite willing to travel as well. So if you would like Amy to perform at one of your events, contact her at aharlot at earthlink.net or visit Amy at www.idanz.com forward slash aharlot. Amy happily welcomes intelligent feedback about the genre and the arts, as I said before, and she is willing to perform wherever you need her to perform. Probably all you need to do is just give her a call. You can call her on 212-989-8217. Jabari, can we have Amy's email and website on when you have a moment please i'm going to enjoy the rest of amy's performance Keep going with the music, Jabari. It's inspiring Amy. She's going into really zany postures now. Thank you.
me a cue when the segment is over. I have a lot of questions for you. I wish we could capture the other leg, it's somewhere closer to the ceiling, right? <laughs> Thank you, Jabari, that's great. Namaste. Namaste. That was fabulous. Did you need that table you were going to do? That was for a special demonstration at yeah. the end. I can at do it end. now. Let's do that. So, you ready for your questions? I have a million questions running through my head. No, we can do that later. You want to do that now? questions going through my head. I just have to ask you. Let's... Come on, you're with us. You're with me. I'm going to give you the red one. You can take the red one and maybe switch places. We're okay. We're on camera. Everyone knows this is a special performance. They're going to forgive us for the small interruption of putting our mats back. But Amy, I have to ask you this question before I forget. Honestly, do you... Do you ever, have you ever got stuck in one of these postures? Never. That, that is the magic of Amy. Amy is, you are simply amazing. You were just amazing. It was a delight to watch you. Thank you so much. It was really wonderful. Tell us something, how long have you been practicing yoga? I've been practicing yoga for over 30 years. Okay, folks, there's a lesson right there. If you want to get to step 100, try not to skip 1 through 99. Amy has been practicing for 30 years. So maybe in 30 years from now, you can try and do a little bit of what Amy's doing. But please, tell us a little more. How did you get started? Well, as a teenager, I was 
taking ballet, jazz, and modern dance like so many other young ladies do. Right. And I found it boring. It wasn't challenging oh, enough okay. for me. And so I got interested in doing acrobatics and gymnastics right. and yoga. And that was how I got started as a late in my teens, right. um, switching entirely from dance to acrobatics, gymnastics, and yoga. And even that wasn't enough. And so in the early 1980s, I discovered Chinese wushu, or martial, martial arts, arts. Right. which actually is an art form that combines everything. Uh, advanced wushu does require acrobatics, gymnastics, and yoga flexibility. And um, so I devoted my, I decided I would devote the rest of my life to performing that. But in 1994, out of uh, obsessive compulsive passion for my performances, I was doing the most extreme physical movement you could imagine. I was not sleeping enough, I was not eating enough, and my body was not getting enough nutrition and enough right. rest. Right. And I sustained injuries that tore both rotator cuffs in yeah. my shoulders, disintegrated a disc in my spine, my left hip became so arthritic that by 1998 I had a left hip replacement. I now still have, I recently have developed bursitis in my left knee from a fall that I sustained in j just oh. this past January. And, um, but going. I never stopped doing yoga. I had to stop doing the acrobatics and the gymnastics. My arms will never be able to support my body weight the way they used to. I cannot do the extreme back bends that I used to do. Mm -hmm. That's forever. But I never stopped doing yoga. And I was retired from performing for 15 years. What do you mean retired? I just wasn't performing at all. After okay. I sustained this shoulder and spine right. injuries in 1994, I stopped performing. Okay. And um, I thought I was never going to perform again. That would be entirely out The last doctors night. thought I was disabled, actually, from the kind of injuries that I had. But I never stopped doing yoga. And after 15 years of depression, misery, and frustration not performing, I realized that I was still doing advanced yoga and that, OK, I couldn't be the martial art spectacle solo entertainer I once was, but I could create something out of yoga. And that's what I did. I decided I would use the yoga that I had left the remnant of my previous performing oh, career. I have to stop you right there. This is the remnants of what you know. This is the I'm remnant afraid of even what to think I used of what to you do. could do. Oh my God. <laughs> it was amazing. What you just did today, the Yoga Odyssey, was amazing. And I'm really, really happy that you are here with us. I have never seen, honestly, and we're going on air, and I'm saying this, you know, with a very straight face, and it's honest, it's really true. I've never seen such an amazing performance. It was just a five to six minute dance, but it was truly amazing. Considering you've been practicing for so long, it still doesn't mean that any of us could achieve that. Even after 30, 50 years, I don't think I could do what you're doing. You are amazing. You're Thank amazing. you so much. But that's the passion I have for yoga right. as a discipline and as an art form, and I'm trying to create and entertaining, inspiring, performing art out of yoga so that I can present it to people everywhere. Well, that's what I want to ask you. Anytime. You talked about theme-based yoga. So, for instance, at Halloween, you would do... I would have a special spooky, spooky yoga, yoga act. What do you do? Do you go around booing at everyone? Well, it's sort of like okay. creepy, ah, spooky gestures right, with eerie, right. supernatural-sounding music. Right. And it's kind of... Talking music? Do you to have create your own? Do you have your own musicians? I do work with live music. Right. I adore performing with live music. I will perform to any genre of music, and I have. And about the only genre of music I haven't yet uh, tackled is, I think, is hip hop. And right. I would uh, I'm sure perfectly, you'll discover a way I certainly would be perfectly willing to take on that challenge. Yeah, I'm sure you would meet. <laughs> Nobody's thing. asked me yet, but I would certainly give it a try if somebody. Folks asked at me home, don't. Don't forget, don't give up. 
Amy is very contactable. She will have her website at the end of the show. Also, whenever she's going to be speaking, we'll, we're going to have her website and her email right there. I think I may even have your phone number, but if not, they will get in touch with you. Also, if you Google Amazing Amy Yoga, you'll find me. That's a very apt phrase, too. And I thought, I thought I was understating it when I called you Amazing Amy. Of course, I didn't give you that expression. I Googled you, and I actually found out that's what everyone was calling you. In fact... Amy has performed in so many places, I picked up one of your cards. Another producer, friend of mine, said, you have to have Amy on your show. I said, no, mine is a basic yoga stretch show, but you are a real inspiration for what people can do eventually. If they put their heart into it, they practice as long as you have. Probably it'll take most of us a lot longer than you have. So tell me a little more, what inspired you? I know you did mention you started fairly early, but what, what is your total inspiration, for instance, today? We had I love audience. performing because, well, it's just in my nature to express myself with my body. I mean, right. that's, I've you know, been a dancer basically all my life. I also do artwork as well, but my real passion is to express myself with my body, using right. movement as, as the art form. And what I like to do, again, it's part of my personality. I tend to be a, a rather extreme personality. And so my body wanted to do the most extreme things that the human body can do. And I'm always pushing the envelope. I'm always pushing right. the limits. And um, whatever my body will permit me to do is what I do. So if my shoulders say, you can't do handstands anymore, right. I know I'll never be able to do handstands but again. But you find an adaptation. But I have found a way. I find ways to move that right. my body will permit. If my spine tells me, you can't do the bridge anymore. Right. And okay, I can't do the bridge anymore, but I find other ways to move my spine that my body will permit me and to do. And still stay limber. And so I never stop. I stretch 365 days a year I work out. I never take a day off. I'm a vegetarian. That helps a lot. I'm not a vegan. I am a vegetarian. Tell me I do the eat difference. seafood. I, I, never, I, I never will eat understood. seafood. I will eat things with egg in it. Right. I eat minimum dairy, very little dairy. Right. Occasionally I'll indulge in a little ice cream because I love ice cream, but that's just a rare treat. Most of the time I am a vegetarian. I will eat seafood. That's the, a vegan will never eat seafood. Oh, is that right? Okay. Eggs. I didn't really know or that. Or dairy. It, oh, dairy. A vegan is strictly um, vegetables. Vegetable and, yeah, plant. Uh, plant. And that's just too restrictive for me personally. Right. But I would totally recommend that the entire planet go on a vegetarian <coughs> diet. We would really help save the entire environment is it if true? everybody did that. I mean, you are obviously living proof of a vegetarian diet working very well for you. So, But I've been hearing all kinds of things. Is it actually true that by staying vegetarian, we are able to explore our elasticity more? Does I think it work? absolutely helps. I became a vegetarian in college because the college food was so bad. <laughs> and after yes, that being like a vegetarian for six months, my parents you know, took me out to dinner and I had a steak. And I was so sick afterward, I realized there was no turning back. Right. And um, I been a big supporter of vegetarianism ever since. There are a lot of actual yogis out there in yoga schools and yoga masters who believe they really wouldn't want, they, this is their belief and I'm not saying, I'm not really endorsing or denying it or anything, I'm just quoting from a few sources that I read that a lot of schools and yogis believe that it really is not necessary to put something dead into a live body, and that's why they stay away from meat. Does that make sense to it you? It makes complete sense to me. And also, I just think that anything with a face that walks on four legs, has fur or feathers, is a sentient being, and I just right. can't eat, you know, sentient beings. Um, I, even, I even feel a little uncomfortable eating fish sometimes, right. Right. but I just couldn't stand such a restricted vegan diet. You, you so. do r realize that in some countries, fish head curry is a delicacy. And they actually, you can actually see the eyes looking oh, at you. Oh, yes. I've eaten um, Chinese food where you see the whole it's entire fish. Right. And uh, yeah, I, it does. It would bother you It now. does bother me a little bit. Right. <laughs> 
but to each his own. Everybody has different tastes in food and it's what we grow up with. If, for instance, if you've grown up with meat and you've been able to give it up, it's, it's a real achievement right there. If there are folks out there who have grown up eating meat and they're able to give it up, that's a big achievement. But for people who have never, I did not grow up eating meat, but I did, I have tasted meat somewhere along my life and mostly it was white meat and seafood. Now I'm starting to give it up. I've given it up, I'm starting to go back to fish, but it's sort of off on, off on. But for me, it's not hard to give it up. Do you believe that there's any truth in that? I think that if- Is it harder for people who have grown up eating meat to give it up? I think where there's a will, there's a way. Right. And also, I, like um, I have no problem having a tremendous variety right. and delicious, satisfying meals on my diet. Um, there are cuisines from India and China that are thousands of years old that have tremendous varieties of vegetarian right. dishes. You can be very satisfied yes. as a vegetarian. You don't have to be bored on a, on a vegetarian diet at all. So we have spoken quite a bit about diet. I'm, I'm also curious about the sleep aspect. You did mention a little bit of sleep deprivation when you were younger and performing and that added, aggravated your problem and you injured yourself a couple of times. Now, how important is it, how much sleep do you need for doing whatever you're doing? You need a lot of mental focus, you need a lot of energy. Yes, uh, getting enough rest is an important lesson that I learned very painfully right. uh, when I lost my shoulder and spine um, oh. agility. And uh, that was a very painful lesson that I learned. Right about proper nutrition and, and getting enough rest. So, yes, getting enough rest. How much sleep do you need? I personally need a, the standard eight hours. Right, yeah. okay. And it doesn't have to be broken up? Um, I personally, I often do break it up. Okay. I, have, I sometimes know. have naps in the yes. afternoon kind of thing. In yoga, we do believe that in afternoon, when the sun is at its peak between 12 and 3, we should take a 30-minute break, a minimum of 30-minute break. Literally, what I think in some places it's called a siesta. A siesta, yeah, You need to take a half hour, and you need to sleep. Of course, your mind doesn't sleep, but your body goes to rest. So it's like shutting down the engine and you know giving it some rest. We do have a couple of minutes left. We're, we're probably over, but thank you, Amy. You were wonderful. I hope you will stay on. Maybe come back tomorrow, and we will do some balanced postures, and I can learn just watching you. Thank I would so be much. honored and delighted. Thank you so much. Namaste. It's wonderful to have you. Jabari, are we okay for time? You can wrap up? Say it on air. It's okay. That's it. Thank you. Here's what I suggest. She was good. Wasn't she amazing? It turned out very different from my usual stretch sequences because we didn't do, I didn't do any stretching. But you were so wonderful. It was just worth it having you here. What I'm going to do in the next episode, and because it's the next episode, but it's actually A in the next day, I'm going to say yesterday. So you'll get the gist of it. Yeah. And that's why I said tomorrow. <laughs> actually, I meant that we were going to do the next episode.
to Yoga Express, the mobile stretch clinic that takes yoga to the people. Yoga Express is a half hour program that airs Monday through Friday, weekdays at 1.30 on Time Warner 57, RCN 84 and Fios 35. Typically what we do is, this is a yoga, virtual yoga health workshop. So what we do is we try to work our way, we try to workshop 48 basic ailment specific stretches. Off, this, off of this card, it's a sequence, simple sequence called 48 plus. We have a postcard, we also have a fridge magnet, stick this up on your fridge, and a little business card with a sequence on the back, put it in your wallet, put the postcard in your handbag. So no excuses not to stretch. Stay with us. We will be with you Monday through Friday. Having said that, I would like to reintroduce the amazing Amy Harlett, yoga contortionist and dancer who was with us yesterday with her wonderful, wonderful performance. Thank you for coming back, Amy. Thank you so much. Amy is here to prove a point that regardless of where you are in your yoga practice, she believes, very humbly believes, that there's always room for more. There's always room to learn more and to challenge yourself further and further. Although, having said that, Amy, with my sequence, it may seem very, very basic to you. That is why I feel very honored you're with us. You're very humble. And I appreciate your coming and stretching with us. We're going to go through some basic balance postures. Before I do that, Amy, we sort of stopped short yesterday. I had a couple of other minor small questions which I'm hoping you can help address today. Amy Harlan, well done. We've got your correct website up there. It's idance.net. Thank you so much Anne-Marie and Jabari. Really appreciate that. Amy Harlan lives to perform and performs to live. This is your career. This is what you do for a living. She has been practicing yoga contortionist dancing for the last 30 years. She's done a lot of other things and we did introduce her wonderful repertoire yesterday while she was performing. It's like, it reads like a little, not little, like a long who's who of performance. So that was great. Amy also believes that yoga is an inspiring, very inspiring performing art. I agree with you, Amy. You did say something before we started today's episode, you did say something about feeling rested, feeling centered. Is that what you believe yoga brings to you, to your life? Absolutely. Not only that, but it also brings incredible, exhilarating energy right. as well. So you get a healthful high when you practice yoga. Absolutely. There I you get go. that wonderful endorphin buzz. Yeah, there you go. So without putting any of that stuff externally, without putting anything into your body, without, how would we say that, without making, um, putting any impurities into your body. Your body is still pure. All you're doing is using, you're moving all your chakras, your energy centers. You are displaying that energy by performing these yoga postures in dance like fluid, dance like motion. You did the yoga odyssey yesterday, which was wonderful to watch. Very graceful, very smooth. And Amy doesn't just have the yoga odyssey in her repertoire. She has Spooky yoga, Yuletide yoga, yoga tango, tribal yoga, you name it. She's done it and she's been there. Amy would be wonderful to have as a performer at any of the special events you have at home. So if you want to reach her, you did have her website. It will come back again at the end of this program. Right now, Amy is also going to tell us a little bit at 50 plus. She, can you believe that someone her age, and I don't mean to put you down by saying you're older, in fact, you're proud, I can see. You're very proud that even at this age, you're able to do things that others cannot do. Isn't that correct, Amy? At the age of 55, I perform with injuries all over my body. Go. Uh, flowing feats of flexibility that few folks can achieve at any age. Wow. Now, if Amy can do that at 55, I'm sure, of course, she's been doing these stretches for the last 30 years, so don't attempt it right away. But we will try and take you on that path, that path where you have all these endorphins 
rushing to give you this high that Amy is always, always appears to be on. Thank you, Amy. That was a wonderful demo. Amy has had this love affair with yoga for 30 years. So what you need really out there, all of our viewers, what you need is passion for what you do. Hi, George. Feel free to join us. <laughs> So what Amy and I are going to do today is we're going to stand up and we're going to talk, workshop ourselves through about eight or nine balanced postures, most of them standing. But as we go down, if we do go down in, in, into any seated balanced postures, we will warn you about that. Now, we need the cameras to come up so you can get us or we're going to get only the legs. Anne-Marie, how are we doing for that? Jabari? Okay. Now, Amy, maybe we will continue our interview till they can get the cameras on us before we get into the balanced postures. Anne Marie, is it safe to get up? Would you get us standing up? Jabari? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Come. Amy, we're ready. Thank you so much. That was a very minor technical glitch, but we're going to get there. We're going to get, Amy and I are going to get into some of these balanced postures from the sequence. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie and Jabari. We're going to stand with our heels together, toes slightly apart, hands to your side. Folks at home, today's sequence is okay. To, it's okay for you to stretch with us. These are basic balanced postures. As I call out the instructions in a few moments, what we're going to do is we will inhale, and Amy and I will get our show arms up to shoulder height, and then as we exhale, we're going to go down. We're going to bend at the knees, almost as if we're sitting on an imaginary chair. So let's inhale, Amy. Inhale, bring your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing in. It's okay, you can go in front of the monitor. <laughs> exhale, bend at the knees, and let's go down. Keep your knees close together. I'm using a loud exhale, it's called Ujjayi breathing, and Amy is doing the same now. Ujjayi breathing is a kind of guttural breath from the back of your throat. We're going to try and hold this posture. Holding time is very important in yoga. If the pressure is too much on your knees, lean back a little. If you're comfortable, it's okay to lean forward. Inhale, let's come up. Exhale, and release the arms. Posture number 11 is another balanced posture. It's called the tree posture. And Amy, I know you're going to be very good at this because I saw you in that posture before we started today. So good or not, I want folks at home to try these balanced postures. Remember, whenever you are in a balanced posture, the way to hold your balance is look at an object in front of you that does not move. Hopefully, our cameras will not move. So I'm going to look at the camera or the cones that are you know, holding the cameras in place. Okay, heels together, toes slightly apart. Transfer the weight to your right leg. Lift your left heel off the ground. Turn your left knee to one side and very gently raise your left leg and hold your left big toe with your right hand. Now, what we're gonna do is we will, for balance, we'll place the right hand on our right hip, whichever leg you have up, you have raised, the other hand goes on your hip. So I'm gonna place, now before we go into, okay, that's all right, let's go. I'm sorry, Amy, I think we held it too long. Okay, let's go. Let's place the left, get right back in. If you fall out of your posture because we are holding, our holding time is too long, get right back in, just like Amy is doing. Actually, I do it better on the other side. On the other side, that's perfectly good. Let's start with the other side, no problem. Transfer the weight to your left leg. Raise the right foot at the heel. Now lift your right foot higher. Grab hold of your right big toe with your right hand. Place the left hand on your left hip. Inhale and extend the right leg out in front of you. This is actually Utti Tapada. It is not the tree posture. I did name the tree, but we got into this because it just comes naturally. Whatever comes naturally at any particular moment, get into that stretch. Exhale, and let's release. 
We did not extend the leg on the left side, but Amy, you okay or shall we? Yeah, let's help? do the other side. Let's try the other side. And that's, that's very good, thank you. It's very important to balance both sides of your body, otherwise you will feel an imbalance, not only physically, also emotionally. So this time, let's transfer the weight to the right leg. One more time, gonna raise the left leg, hold your left big toe, place the right hand on your hip, inhale and extend. Now, sometimes some of you may be able to take your leg to the side, but that's okay. Inhale and release the left leg, release the arm. The next posture we're gonna go into is called the Vriksh Asana. The previous one where we extended the legs one at a time was called Uttita Pada. Uttita Pada is raised foot. Uttita is raised or up and Pada is foot. Now we're going to go into what's called the tree posture. Tree posture is another balanced posture. Remember, look at an object in front of you that does not move. The further ahead you look, the better your balance. If your balance is very good, you can look at something closer to you, but still keep your eyes open. Transfer the weight. Now, which is your better side, Amy? It doesn't okay. matter. Now you're okay, okay. Transfer the weight to your right leg. Now we're gonna lift the left leg, but before you do that, raise the left heel turn your left knee to the side and very gently use your left hand, hold your left ankle, tuck your left foot into the inner right thigh. So your left foot presses into your right thigh. And then once you're there, you're very steady, keep looking ahead of you, place your palms together. You can use, keep one palm at your hip, but place both your, placing both your palms would be good for you. So place your palms together if your balance is very good, you're very comfortable, close your eyes, just for a split second, notice the difference. When you close your eyes, it's a little harder to hold the posture for too long. Even a second, one second every day is good. Exhale and let's release. Very gently, I'm gonna stagger back just a little bit. Now this time I'm gonna transfer the weight to the left leg. Raise the right heel just a little bit Place the left hand, now this time, let's get our balance right, right from the beginning. Place the left hand on your left hip. Raise, lift the right leg, and hold the right ankle with your right hand, and tuck the right foot into the inside of your left thigh, and hold. Now, once your foot is there, get a nice grip, attach. One of our participants love to use the phrase attach. Attach your foot, right foot to your left thigh, Press your palms together in front of your chest in a namaste. If you're very comfortable, like Amy, I have my better side and this is not one of them, as you can guess, but I'm gonna try and close my eyes for one second. Concentration does waver when you do not have a point of focus. So one second is all we're gonna to attempt today. Exhale and release. We did, wow, nice. We did, Postures number 11. We did 13, I went back to 11. We're gonna do another posture called Tula Danda. Tula Danda is balancing scales. Danda is a stick. Tula is literally a balancing scale. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna place the right foot a little ahead of the left. So just stagger your feet, just a little bit. We're gonna inhale, palms by your side, chest is nice and out. Tighten your core muscles, this is a balanced posture. Inhale, bring your arms up to shoulder height. Palms facing down, keep going, keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Clasp your palms together, and what we're going to do is we're going to dip our torso forward and our left leg will go up at the same time, like a balancing scale, and we keep exhaling. So keep your back nice and straight, exhale and lift. Lift your left leg, dip your torso. Hold. Inhale, let's come up. Exhale and release. Amy, you are so used to your flowing motion that I think this is fairly too basic. Yeah. <laughs> I understand, I understand, because you're so used to the dance movement that just holding still. But just so I can share this with you, holding skill, holding still is our basic skill that we are trying to get past. So unless we can, uh, unless my participants and I can get past the holding still, we can never get to where you are. So 
Bear with me, we're gonna stay together. Now, move your right foot back just a little bit. Stagger your right foot back about a couple of inches away from the left. Palms by your side, inhale. Bring your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Once again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna exhale and dip our torso forward, raise the right leg up. Try to keep it level. Look at a point in front of you that does not move. Inhale, and let's come back up. Exhale, and release. Typically, the postures, the three postures that we did would actually flow one after the other, but we are doing them one at a time just to teach you what is a start and finish point for these postures. We would go into Nataraj Asana, which is the uh, posture that typically Lord Shiva is supposed to be in, but we're not going to the spiritual side. We're just going to get into a dancer's posture. Transfer the weight to your right leg. Lift your left heel off the floor. This time, instead of extending the left leg forward, we're going to take it behind us. Clasp your left ankle from behind. So bend your left leg at the knee. Hold your left ankle from behind. Once you're there, try and look at a point in front of you that doesn't move. I noticed that the robotic camera moved just a little bit, so I'm gonna look at the cone below that. Now, with your right arm, raise your right arm. You can keep your forefinger and your thumb connected if you wish, or just keep your palm flat, that's fine. And as we exhale, we're gonna dip our torso forward, raise the left knee up. Keep exhaling. We just need to come Excuse me, I'm gonna go right back in. Very nice, Amy, good balance. If you get out of a posture, come right back in. I'm gonna try and hold the posture. Inhale, let's come up. Exhale, and release. If you get out of a posture, do not get discouraged. Get right back in. And when you go to the other side, you know what to expect next. You know how long you can hold it. And you can get, you, we get a little better every time. This time, transfer the weight to your left leg. Raise your right leg at the knee. Raise your left, right heel off the ground. This time, take your right, hold your right ankle from behind. So fold, bend your right leg at the knee. Hold your right ankle. Raise the left arm as high as you can. Exhale, dip your torso forward. Lift your knee off the ground. Now we're just gonna go down up to shoulder height. If you're very, very comfortable with no distractions, you can try and attempt to go down all the way. Inhale, let's come up. Exhale, and release. That was number 14, Natrajasa. We have another balanced posture with not, which not many schools really enjoy teaching this, but it's not a very difficult one. If you could do the Natrajasa, hi Joe, how are you? then this should not be difficult. It's called Garudasan or Eagle Posture. I'm gonna transfer the weight to your left leg. Raise your right foot at the heel. And what you're gonna do physically, we have, the human body has got built-in props. You really don't need any props outside of you. Use your hands, lift your right thigh, and place it over the left leg. So right thigh go, goes over the left thigh, and then try to twine your right foot around the left ankle. Once you're there, right leg goes over left leg. Inhale, raise your left arm. Left elbow comes over the right elbow. Twine your arms together and hold. Look at a point ahead of you that does not move. Inhale, release your arms and your legs. Folks at home, if you are stretching with us, and you're in a balanced posture, always release your legs first. It's a very simple, logic. there's a logical explanation for that. You don't want to fall out without grace. So you want to release your legs first, then your arms. Uh, having said that, I probably release my arms first, right, Joe? I, I, unt <laughs> I untangle my arms first because I wanted to explain something. I think I noticed that. Okay, 14 was... Garudasa, we have, no, that's 15, okay, good, we're doing well, 31. 
Let's see what's the other posture. Uh, oh, this is the we full do boat. The other side. We did only one side. Thank that's you, right. Amy. There you go. There's an example of concentration. See, Amy has remembered, and that's very important. Thank you for reminding me. Amy has felt the imbalance in her body. Physically, she has she's been stretching so much. She's a contortionist and dancer. She knows. Thank you. I appreciate that. Transfer the weight to your right leg. Raise your left foot at the heel, and then physically use your arms to transfer your left thigh, to move your left thigh over your right thigh. Try to twine, tuck your left foot behind the right calf. Left leg is over, so right arm comes over. Raise, inhale, raise your right arm. Exhale, place the right elbow over the left elbow. Twine your arms together and hold. Garuda is eagle. I have no idea how to identify this posture as an eagle, but we're gonna hold. Inhale, come up. Release the legs first. Then untangle the arms. That was a wonderful example of how yoga improves concentration. Amy has been focusing so much, she remembered to remind me, so I really appreciate that. Posture number 31 is a seated balanced posture, so we're gonna sit down and hopefully the cameras will pick us up. They usually do very well on that. It's full boat, Amy, it's this one. Number 31 requires a lot of back strength. So what we're doing in this posture, it's still a balanced posture. We're gonna balance on our buttocks. So we're gonna bring our legs up and our upper body with the arms raised in front of us. It does require balance, so we will still need to focus at a point in front of us that does not move. Keep your legs extended out in front of you. And Amy, I know you've already, you've been performing at so many places, so you must be tired as well, but I may have still a few more questions at the end of our stretches, so you're okay with that? Yes, thank you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna inhale as soon as the cameras pick us up, thank you, Joe. Okay, maybe we need to lower the camera just a little bit. They can't see us. <laughs> okay, how about this one? Ah, that's it, thank you, Anne-Marie. Thanks, Jabari, both of you. We're gonna inhale, and as we inhale, we're gonna lift our legs off the floor, and our arms are gonna come out in front of us. So actually, let's get our arms out in front right now. There's no big tension about the arms. It's the legs that are difficult to get off the floor. So we're gonna inhale and lift our legs. As we inhale and the legs come up, the body will lean back just a little bit. Keep your back muscles nice and tight. Inhale, let's come up. Very nice. And hold. Now, Try not to point your toes. Amy's a dancer, so I can see through the side of my eye. Exhale and release. I noticed, Amy, because you're a dancer, your toes are automatically pointed. That's fine, but in the traditional posture, you do not have to point your toes, but just be aware if you do, the muscles you're stretching are your quads. When you flex your feet, you stretch your hamstrings. Traditionally, we tend to stretch the hamstrings in this posture, but that was so graceful, I didn't have the heart to tell you to get off of it. That was nice, but traditionally, we'd keep our feet flexed. Also, remember another thing, viewers at home, when you're coming into the full boat posture from a seated start position, we're engaging our lower abdominal muscles. There is another way to get into this posture, and let's actually, let's put our heads, let's turn around, Amy will show them. If you come into the full boat position from a supine posture, from a full boat posture from a supine position, you will need to engage your upper abdominal muscles. So we're gonna lie on our back just for a moment just to help you feel the difference. Now, what Amy and I are gonna do, we're gonna inhale and I'm gonna try my best. My lower abs are a little stronger than my upper abs. I'm not sure how high I can come regardless you want to engage your upper abdominal muscle. So we're going to inhale, bring our legs up and our torso up, up approximately at about the same time. Inhale, let's come up. I had to cheat just a little bit because my legs do not move as well in this, from the supine position. Exhale and release. Come back into seated position and let's turn around. We have a couple of minutes left, which is wonderful, wonderful timing because we just have one more balanced stretch to go into and then Amy, well, let's go into prone position. And then after that, Amy, I have one or two questions left for you. We're gonna do what's called a plank position, Dandasana. Let's come on our hands and knees first. 
palms in front below, just below the shoulders, shoulder width height, uh, sh shoulder width, not height, right? And then your knees are under the hips at hip width, and then we're gonna just curl your toes in and lift your knees. Once your knees are off the floor, you wanna make sure your buttocks are not too deep down, not too high. When you go up, it becomes a different posture. When you go down, you hurt yourself. Let's stay somewhere in the middle. We wanna try and look like a plank. Engage your low back muscles. You wanna keep them nice and firm and hold. This posture demands both balance and arm strength. Exhale, bring your knees down to the floor and release. Amy, before we wind down, we do have a couple of minutes, so would you mind, are you two, because you've been performing all over the place, are you two tired, you're okay? Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> that's, that's the spirit that Amy has. She has all this wonderful, wonderful energy, all these endorphins that are pouring into her body every time she stretches. Tell me something, we didn't have a chance really yesterday to ask you, how did you develop this passion for yoga? I know we started off talking about it, but we never really got into it. Well, I developed the passion because I wanted to um, find a system of movement because it, my natural inclination is to express myself in my body. Right. And I found ballet, jazz, and modern dance not challenging enough. And um, gymnastic, acrobatics, and yoga were a challenge that satisfied me. Fantastic. And um, I discovered that yoga was a style of movement that was not only good for exercise and health, but I found it a wonderful performance art. A wonderful release of those endorphins that you keep storing in your body, right? And <laughs> a way of just being able to express myself to right. the ultimate. Just so you know, Amy is available to stretch at any of your performances or events. You have her website, and in fact, if we are not able to get that up in time, there you go, aharlem at earthlink.net. My mistake again, it's earthlink.net. And you can also visit her, that, that's her uh, email. Her website is www.idance.net, or is that dot .com? idance.net forward slash A Harlan. So contact Amy. If you're not able to reach her, write to me. I will certainly forward any of those emails. Look at this girl. She has all this energy even when we are closing. She's into this Hanuman Asana. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Amy, both for yesterday and today. Our viewers are going to love you. Thank you very much for staying with us. And we hope you'll be here to stretch with us. And maybe, maybe, if you're lucky enough, Amy will join you one of these days. She will be here to perform again for us. Thanks again. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I think we're out. I don't know what went on, but we're out. Thanks, Anne Maria. I really appreciate you guys hanging in there for us. I know we made some mistakes, but we will. We did get one time we got the website right, one time we got the other, and it's my fault. I take full responsibility. Uh, well, one way or another, they'll air, find you. Well, okay. actually, before you air the one that has my performance on, you can still correct the website. No, the website is right now. Oh, okay. It was the dot net, right? But they'll still find you. They'll still find you because they will email, and I will correct it. I'll, Oh, it does. Right. right. They will get you too. And they will reach you. It's not a problem. And one way or another, they'll get to you. But I will also, of course, they'll still have you back anyway. Because you were so good in the earlier episode too. So Thank it's you great. so much. Yeah, we'd love to have you back. Yeah, I, I, I'd love really to keep this. And, yes, um, yes, of I course. had a wonderful time. I did too. We all did. We, you had... You have an audience right here, and we had two other folks watching. You should have seen her performance in the previous episode. She was super. She's a contortionist dancer, and she was really amazing. You really are. You deserve that title, Amazing Amy. I am very impressed. I, mean, I feel embarrassed because what? I was really bad at doing this basic No, that's because stuff. you're, you're and, such advanced and then